what do you kind of remember from that? And who, who are some of the other people that, uh, maybe other NBA players, what have you, that really provided support for you during your uh, rehab? Um, for me, appreciate Gallo. Um, for me, uh, the first person that reached out was Clay in the room, um, in the x-ray room. Um, that meant a lot to me. That helped me a lot. Um, I understand that from the get-go it was going to be a long journey. And uh, just seeing, uh, like seeing his face um, in that moment and um, you could tell he was still recovering from his injury and he was still hurt um, mentally. It just helped me a lot, you know, get through knowing that I'm going to be in a dark time. I'm not going to, it's not going to be some uh, cakewalk. So, um, all the depot. Um, I mean, basically, I mean, a lot of guys did. It's hard for me to single out a few, but um, Gallo was one. All my old teammates. Um, I'm just happy to be in this position, um, knowing that everything I did during rehab um, was solid. Um, no. Arash? Agent Long. Arash Medanic, Sports Net Toronto. Um, I know over the years you've spoken about the influence of martial arts and Bruce Lee. To have that quote in your locker the other night, knowing is not enough, we must apply, willing is not enough, we must do. How has that helped you? What, 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 in the visualization you do, the martial arts that you practice, all of that, what, what impact has that had on you? What impact does it make on you? Uh, I think it's um, realization, I think, is one of the biggest things. You know, if you, everybody talks about, you know, don't, don't want to miss an opportunity, or when you miss an opportunity, like, damn, that was a good opportunity for me to have. Um, I just think, you know, thinking about, all the things that I've done growing up, um, all the things I've wanted to do growing up, to be here is one of them. And I don't want to miss the opportunity that I'm in. So just like I said, knowing is not enough. Um, it's good to know it and realize it, but you got to go out there and motivate yourself to do it. Um, so for me, it's just keeping that mindset. Um, but all the martial arts, not just basketball. I mean, all the martial arts stuff uh, helps me with just life and, uh, Navigate, you know, that way. Jeff, over on the side here. Chad Zilga, USA Today. Jamal, after game four, you said that this team is ready to win a championship and has the tools to do so. What have been the things, both big and small, along the way that have led you to believe that, regardless of what happens tomorrow night? Uh, it's long before, um, long before we made it here that I thought this was going to happen. You know, it's a belief of being in the playoffs before, having the experience, um, seeing the team and the chemistry grow, um, having the same core uh, my whole career. Um, that's when I saw it, you know, that's when I believed it. And, uh, you know, to be here, it just kind of rounds it out and uh, you know, shows that when we're given the right uh, circumstances and everybody healthy, you know, God willing, um, you know, we can do it. You know, I think when we're playing our best basketball, we're a very hard team to stop. And uh, I just see us playing like that for the majority of the time, um, sticking together, even when we go through you know rough stretches, um, we're still in a good place. So uh, I've personally had that belief for a very long time. Um, this is nothing, no new confidence for me. Next row back, Dan. Uh, Dan Devine, Yahoo Sports. Jamal, uh, the three-point line has obviously been a pretty big bellwether in this series when they've been able to get a lot going. Here, right back here, sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, when they've been able to get that, get that going in game two, that went their way. Otherwise, you guys have done a really good job of limiting attempts. Um, what goes into that challenge of limiting attempts for them, and how do you feel that you guys have done about that since game two? Um, yeah, I mean, their shooters are moving on every drive. Um, you know, Duncan's flying off both ways off Bam. You know, Struess is he's not shooting well, but he's getting he's getting some good looks. You know, so we we can't keep giving them, uh, these shooters good looks. Um, for us, as long as we, as long as you know, we know they're going to make shots. But as long as we, we keep our discipline and don't give them the open stuff, I think we're in a good spot. You know, uh, we gave them a couple of easy layups, easy dunks last game. You know, we we take those away. Uh, we take away a lot of lights they have and um, um, kind of just shut down the, their offense. You know, we're, we're staying home with shooters and allowing AG to play one on one with Jimmy a lot. Same thing with Yoke. So. Um, 
it feels like we're playing to take away the three and they're still getting some good looks. So I think we're just keeping our intent, our, aware, our awareness up on drives and um, those test situations, offensive rebounds, um, finding the shooters, getting back in transition. So just taking the easy ones away and making them have to, you know, if they're going to hit shots, it's over a, a contested hand. In the back center. There's Jamal. Uh, Michael Pina, the ringer. Uh, obviously, Nicola is a two-time MVP. He's a runner-up for the award this season. But have you seen him play better ever than he is right now? Um, no, maybe one day in practice. <laughs> but no, um, he... He's very uh, smart with his tactics, um, the way they front him or deny him. Um, you know, we, we don't really fight a lot of the pressure that we both get. Um, and just seeing him make quick decisions, you know, if the pass is open, there's no hesitation. Even if he turns it over sometimes, uh, he's just taking what the, what the uh, defense has given him. But some of the passes he makes um, and how quick he'll make them, I think that's what impresses me the most. Um, there's no hesitation with that. You know, some guys don't hesitate with their jump shot. You know, they just go right into the shot no matter what. He does the same thing with his passing, and it's hard to guard. It's hard to, definitely with AG in the dunker, it's hard to guard him um, and have that guy step up and be in a tough spot. Um, so Yoke's just holding the ball for a half a second longer and figuring it out. And he's been doing that for so long um, on different levels. And, uh, you know, he won his first MVP. And then his numbers were better than the second MVP. And then his numbers are better during during now. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think there's more to come actually from Yoke. I think he can get a little bit. I think we haven't seen a side of Yoke that we're going to see um, where he can be just pure dominance uh, all the way time, or the whole game, um, even more than he has been. Alvaro standing on the left. Alvaro Martin, NBA Latin America, NBA Mexico. There's a quality about this team right now in this series that when there's a problem, you fix it and you never go back and make that mistake again. Over helping the three point shot, pick and roll, the zone, how to disarm the zone. There's an element that you see the problem early, fix it, and then you never go back and make that mistake again. Is that something that we're seeing this series more often perhaps than, than usual? Is that something that's part of the AD, uh, DNA of the team? Yeah, um, I, you know, it's just. Uh... It's like when you're trying to teach something and they keep making the same mistake over and over. Um, you know, how many times have we gone back and seen us not get back in transition? How many times um, not boxing out, ball watching, all that stuff? You know, I think once we just be aware that we're doing that um, in the moment in the game, you know, we have a quicker, even if it's half a second, we're just realizing it a second quicker. Um, and we're all making the, the, the right effort to make up for that mistake. So, um, and a lot of it is, is even if we do make a mistake, there's, there's somebody behind it covered for you, you know? So um, as all of us being on a string and all of us understanding what we're trying to accomplish, obviously they're manipulating stuff, you know, they'll get a few here and there, but as long as we're on the same page, um, we'll be good for 48. Last question on your right. Hey, Yamal, um, when you go back and see all the journey that you have go through with the team, uh, what's the message for those people that have been waiting for this important moment, uh, like the fans, the people that work inside the team, uh, what's your message for them like before the most important night of this franchise? Um, I don't know, I'd just say, uh, you know, patience is key. Um, you know, nothing happens overnight. Um, I think we've done a great job of, uh, as an organizer, not just as a team, but as an organization, just. Sticking, sticking together, keeping each other up, um, motivating each other. Um, you know, we got Stan and Josh in the locker rooms, um, win or loss, uh, which means a lot. Um, just having everybody, seeing everybody's faces. Um, I'll still get messages from Tim. I'll still get messages from Monte. So that everybody's been part of the journey, understands what we're about. And um, it's just nice to see us be a, a big family and um, understand what it takes to win. and. Um, uh, it's your fault. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's been a journey, a lot of fun. Um, we got more work to do. Yeah, man, it's your fault. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. It's good. Yeah, thank you.